So welcome to a pretty nice November day, sun's shining, again we found a gap between two storm systems but the visibility looks pretty bad. When we launched the boat it was absolutely zero viz. We've come, I don't know, about five miles, we can see the water's still quite green, looking murky but we're on a wreck which fishes really really well between or in stormy weather. The fish tend to shelter here. We're going to try it, we're going to drop a, a line down with a buoy to mark the wreck, we're going to jump in and we're going to have a go. What were you saying about those storm systems, Carl? So we got one storm system off the south of Greenland and then yeah. we got um, another one forming roughly in the Bay of Biscay. So you got Southern Brittany okay. and they're sort of converging around us, which creates sort of in the eye of the storm almost. Seizing the moment, eh? Yeah, see what we can do. That is fish off the side of the wreck. Yeah. I'm guarantee it'll be fishy today. We're somewhere on the wreck. Okay, dropping the line. That's all part of the fun of it. <laughs> Just throw your line in and see where we end up. All right. Due to the recent storms, we found the visibility to be even worse than we had imagined. Not being able to see past the end of the gun is definitely a problem when trying to go spearfishing. As I got to about 12 meters though, I was very surprised to hear a boat coming in overhead, so I decided to ascend to see what was going on. Yeah, because it's so rough, right? Yeah, yeah. It's um, visibility is probably one meter. It's not great, but move on. Thank, thanks for letting us know. These guys turn up and tell us there's actually been an oil spill, and it appears that the wreck in the stormy weather has become a bit more broken up, and it's released some oil. It was very dark down there, so that could be something to do with that. Oil, uh, oil diving was not not the aim of the game today. So instead, we're gonna head further out, we're gonna find some really steep, small pinnacles, see if they're holding any fish. Hopefully the visibility's a bit better, so we'll see how we get on. We were very, very excited by the improved visibility of the next location. Here, it was even better than we'd imagined, probably because we're a long way from any rivers here. At the first pinnacle, however, diving down to roughly 18 meters, I was only greeted by some very curious cuckoo wrasse, which are quite nice to see with their electric blue and red colouring, and many small pollock, but not much else was seen at this location. It was at the third spot where we bumped into spectacular numbers of bass, which we could see from the surface just by swimming around. I decided to swap my spear gun with a GoPro on a stick and get amongst them just to get some footage and experience the school of bass. I'm always amazed by how curious these fish are. Even flailing about on the top of the pinnacle, with my fins everywhere and a GoPro pole swinging around, they come right in to have a look. These bass are all around three to four pounds, an extremely good eating size, and I will definitely be trying to catch one of these later on. On another dive, gliding to the base of the pinnacle in about 20 meters, the fish are much bigger and much more relaxed with my presence. Some of these fish are probably five, possibly six kilograms. And if you look in the top left of the screen here, you can also see a big black bream cruising through. Whilst I was taking a few pictures, Carl had wasted no time in securing one of these big fat black breams. Tell us the story of the breams. So I dive down to about see 12 meters and uh, some stuff moving about, some bream, some bass in the distance far away and the more bream comes in nice straight towards me. Oh, I've done this mistake before of uh, as they turn they get a good view of you and then they go. So you've got to shoot the second they turn and give you that broadside. Good job. So Let's see the fish. A, uh, Hold it up. <laughs> nice shot on it. Well done Carl, that's a beautiful black bream. Okay, see you have the start point Mavericks 90. Yes, do you like the gun? 
Yeah, it's a great gun. Having seen Carl's Black Bream, I was itching to replace my GoPro pole with a spear gun and get lunch. I started by trying to spear one of the smaller fish at the top of the pinnacle. At this size, perfect for an oven bake for the whole family. And a couple of dives later, I decide to descend to the base of the pinnacle, where I've seen the much bigger bass earlier on. Arriving at 22 meters, there are even more bass than I saw down there about half an hour previously, and I have never seen this many sea bass at this time of year. It's just extraordinary how many of these fish there are around. I decide to take a bigger bass that I can take fillets off and get a better yield for a few meals to enjoy with the family. Found this absolutely stunning, stunning sea bass. Really, really happy with this one and happy with the shot placement too literally pulled out the water one minute ago let's get this one in the kitchen so welcome to the kitchen I'm actually going to use a technique to prepare this fish that I recently learnt in the Azores with chef Mike Robinson and the technique uh, begins with skin scaling the fish so usually when we get to the slipway we would um, take the scales remove the scales off the fish that hasn't been done instead we're going to run a knife underneath the scales and I find that this it's a very, very, very nice way of preparing the fish and the skin is really succulent and tasty. So it's worth beginning by grabbing a cloth, putting the cloth on the surface and then that stops your board from moving around too much. So it doesn't quite fit on the board, but that's not a problem. I need quite a sharp knife. I'm gonna start at the tail. And I'm gonna steady my hand on the head and just run the knife up through the scales. And you can see, I'm not applying much pressure to the knife, more or less, more or less just the weight of the knife angling it up. And you can see the scales are coming off, but not actually going into the skin. And another advantage of doing this is you don't end up with loads of mess in the kitchen. You won't cut the skin and you'll just remove the scales in this long kind of piece of what looks like snake skin. Another piece. It's amazing. They come racing now. You've got to be a bit careful. If you get too cocky you might end up cutting the skin. As you can see can't get that close to the fins because I left them on. So I'll probably just finish by running the knife along the edge of the fin to scale that area. Interestingly, um, I haven't gutted the bass yet and it doesn't matter. This bass was speared two days ago but there's no rush to remove the guts in bass, unlike fish like Pollock for example, where the guts have to be removed as quickly as possible. The bass has been skin scaled and now I'm going to take a fillet off and I'm going to prepare it in the oven with some sweet potato and black olives. It's going to be delicious. There you go. Very, very happy with that. That's going to be delicious. Now you know I love really, really simple cooking and I just wanted to share this incredibly simple recipe with you because I hadn't actually used sweet potato before and cooked bass with it, but this was absolutely delicious. And I just cut the sweet potato into rings, threw over some black olives, and then they went in the oven for about 10 minutes. After which, out they came, the fillet of bass went on top with a cheeky bit of butter underneath, and it was absolutely delicious. Now for presentation, 
I know this probably scores a solid zero out of 10, but it was heavenly. And if you did want to see some spearfishing of bass in the wreck, I will pin a comment to the comment section with some quite nice wreck spearfishing from another trip. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching the video and I will see you on the next episode.